Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all okay and you're having a good week. I really feel as though time is flying again at the moment. I feel like as soon as we get back into that school routine, the weeks just seem to fly by. And before I know it, here I am recording another video again. Um, this week's video is going to be a makes video. It's a kind of sewing tale of what I've been sewing and making over September. Um, I always love recording these videos. I really love talking about things that I've made and I love sharing them with you. Uh, and I love watching other people's makes videos as well. It's always really inspirational, I find, to see what other sewists are making in the community. Um, so I hope you all enjoy this video today. So if you are new here, I'm Sally and this is my channel all about sewing and making, sometimes with a bit of knitting and other crafts in there as well, but mainly all about sewing and dressmaking. So if you're into that too, I'd love you to consider subscribing. I'm nearly at 6,000 subscribers over here now, which is amazing and I can't quite believe it. Thank you so much if you have already subscribed and if you are a regular viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. Just before I get started talking about my new makes, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing today. Today I'm wearing a kind of pattern mashup, I suppose, a kind of pattern hack of this um, frill collar blouse. So I have spoken about this in a bit more detail in one of my previous makes videos, which I'll link down below. But basically it is a kind of mashup of the Avid Seamstress, the blouse pattern as the bodice, um, the Megan Nielsen Sudley, um, piece pan collar from the Sudley dress pattern and then I've added the sleeves from the Davenport dress by Friday Passing Company which I've just shortened slightly. And I really really love this hack and um, I was so pleased with how it turned out and I did mean to record this as a sew along because I did have quite a few requests for that but I haven't done that yet so maybe in the future um, I will do that as a sew along if that would be of interest let me know in the comments below if that would be interesting and maybe I can record that in the future. So on to what I've been sewing and making during September. So there hasn't been a great deal of sewing going on this month because I feel like the children didn't go back until kind of well into the first week of September. So I didn't really have time to get sewing until they were sort of settled back into school and everything. But I have actually finished a couple of bigger projects, which was really nice to get done. So I'm looking forward to sharing them with you today. So the first thing that I made um, was actually something that I've been meaning to make for a while now. I made a dressing gown. So this is the Haley robe and this is by Tammy Handmade. And I actually made this as part of a collaboration with Makerist. I do work with them from time to time on their um, promotions and their campaigns and things like that. So they kindly asked me to work with them again on their most recent $2 sale. And they asked me to pick a pattern that I wanted to make up that would have been in their sale. And I chose to make this um, dressing gown pattern or robe pattern, however you want to say it. Um, and yeah, this is an absolutely lovely pattern and I love how it's turned out. So this is the Haley robe by Tammy Handmade and I'll just pop a picture of the pattern in now. So the pattern comes in two different lengths. You can have a kind of shorter robe which finishes above your knee or you can have a longer robe which is really good made in like a toweling or a fleece or something for the winter months super cozy and warm um, so as we're kind of into autumn time and it was still a bit warm when I made this I went for the above the knee robe and I made it in this really lovely cotton fabric which I picked up ages and ages ago from Higgs and Higgs I'm not sure if they've still got it in stock if they have then I'll of course link it below um, so this is an amazing cotton fabric with a lovely crane print all over it and I've had this for a while as I say and I just did not know what to make with it. I was originally going to make a sew over it vintage shirt dress with it because I thought that would have looked lovely but it wasn't actually wide enough to get that pattern cut out of it. So it's just kind of sat around and um, yeah when I thought about making this uh, dressing gown pattern up I thought it would be really lovely in this fabric, a kind of traditional sort of um, robe style print, <laughs> I guess. Um, so yeah, this was a really, really lovely pattern to make up. I'll pop a couple of images in of me wearing it because obviously you can't really see the whole thing um, on. <laughs> you can't really see the whole length of it with me holding it here. Um, but yeah, just to say that this was an absolutely lovely, very speedy sew. I made this up in a morning from printing out the PDF pattern right to getting it hemmed. Um, yeah, really, really quick. Obviously, there's not a lot of shaping in there. The pattern pieces are just quite big and quite straightforward to follow. And yeah, it's just a really, really lovely pattern. I'll just open it up so that you can see 
a bit more of the shape if I can with one hand. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so it just opens up like this. There are some really lovely patch pockets on the front there and then it closes up with um, a tie belt around the waist. And um, the whole thing is finished with a binding, I guess that's called a binding or a facing around the edge which is really simple to attach. So I absolutely love this pattern. It was just a thoroughly enjoyable sew really. So I went for the size eight. I was a bit worried that it would come up oversized, but actually this pattern's a really nice fit. A lot of dressing gown patterns, I think they come up quite oversized. So I was a bit wary as to what size to go for. But in the end, I actually went based on my um, actual measurements and my actual size. And yeah, it's not too oversized at all. It's kind of big enough to go over pajamas or whatever you're wearing as your nightwear. Um, but it's not kind of massive. You do feel quite comfortable in it. So I think the measurements are quite true to size really. And then obviously you can hem it to whatever length you prefer. Um, so I just took up about an inch of hem in the end. So I tried it on when I was at the hemming stage and just had a look at where I wanted it to fall uh, above my knee. And then I just hemmed it accordingly. So yeah, super easy, quick. So um, the only tricky bit I would say maybe is just attaching this facing when you're going around the curved neckline. Um, yeah, that's just a bit of a tricky bit and I just had to pin loads and make sure that I took my time going around those curves so that I didn't get any puckers or anything in the back. And yeah, it went in really nicely. I like the little details of this as well. So you get a little hanging tie here as well that you can hang it on a hook in the bathroom or whatever. And then you've obviously got the little belt loops. My belt loops actually turned out massive, so I could have made these a little bit smaller actually, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend that pattern if you're looking for a robe pattern. As I say, I've been looking for one for quite a while now. I uh, wasn't sure which pattern to go for, so this one turned up just at the right time. I had heard of Tammy Handmade. She's got some lovely patterns, some lovely dress patterns. Um, on the Makerist website, but I didn't realise until I actually came to look at all of her patterns for what I wanted to make up in the sale. I didn't realise she had a robe pattern, so I was really pleased to stumble across that. So I'll link this pattern down below in case you're interested and want to have a look at it for yourself. So the second thing I made in September was actually my Chalk and Notch Wren blouse. And you may have seen this because this was my video last week. It was a sew along of me making this blouse. Um, so yeah, Chalk and Notch Wren blouse pattern. It also comes as a dress. I'll just pop an image in here because I've forgotten to bring the pattern down with me. But yeah, it's a very lovely pattern. If you watch my sew along video, you'll see that I did come into um, a few problems with it along the way, mainly to do with the facing around here. Um, but I think really it was mainly me. I was having a bad sewing day. Um, so I've once I'd figured out the instructions and what they were trying to tell me and everything, and the facing and everything went in really nicely. And I just really love the style of this blouse. This pattern was a total impulse buy. I was browsing Facebook one night and just came across this on the Guthrie Garney um, Facebook page and thought how lovely it was. I really liked the scoop neckline. Um, and it's quite unusual, I think, to find something with a scoop neckline that's not too low and I don't like things being too low and I don't like them being too high either. So I'm quite fussy with necklines and things. So this one I thought was kind of perfect. It just sat really nicely on the model on the pattern image and I just thought it was really pretty. And of course I love these big puffy sleeves and the sleeves have a really interesting detail. I think I found out um, actually that these sleeves are called lantern sleeves, which is really nice. So they're put together in two parts. There's an upper sleeve and a lower sleeve and then the bottom of the sleeve is just elasticated. And because of the extra seam in the middle of the sleeve, you get this kind of um, bit more structure to the puffy sleeve and they kind of stick out a little bit. Um, so that's really nice and I really like that detail and I just love anything that's buttoned down really. I'm a sucker for buttons. I don't mind doing buttonholes, but I don't like doing zips. I know that some people hate doing buttonholes and don't mind doing zips. It depends what you prefer, doesn't it? But I really love buttons and things. So yeah, absolutely love this blouse and it's done. As I say, there were a few problems along the way, which you'll see if you watch my other video, but got there in the end. This lovely fabric is from Stuff and Still. It's a seersucker cotton fabric. I'm not normally one for cotton, but um, I really love this print. So I had to buy it. I just love the retro design on this print. Um, and then when I found the chalk and notch rem pattern, I just thought it would be a really lovely match. So very pleased with this blouse overall, and I would highly recommend it. 
So that was my second make this month, uh, the Chalk and Notch Men Blouse. So my final two makes um, in September were actually two things I've been working on before September, but I finished this month. Um, so you may remember from my plans video, I think, um, that I was working on a Harry Potter quilt for my son. It's actually his birthday today when I'm recording this video and I managed to finish it in time for his birthday. So I was really pleased about that. Um, so yeah, this was quite a big job. I just kind of did it in stages and um, I'll show you the finished product now. This is gonna be really difficult to show you uh, because it's actually turned out massive. I got a little bit carried away sewing my blocks for this <laughs> and it actually turned out far bigger than I was expecting, but I'm really pleased because he's 12 now and um, he'd had this kind of baby quilt that I'd made him years ago when he was two and he'd completely grown out of it. It's just kind of sat on his bed, but when he uses it, his feet stick out the end because he's so much bigger now. So I wanted to make him a bigger quilt. And he's a really big Harry Potter fan. So when I came across these fat quarters in Hobbycraft, Harry Potter fat quarters, I snapped them up. I brought two lots of fat quarters to make this quilt. And then if I hold it up, you can just see that I've kind of padded it out with some filler fabrics, like um, some navy fabrics and some red and some gray and um, white, <laughs> there's a white down here. And I've gone for those colors because they're the colors of his bedroom. So his bedroom is navy and white and gray. So just so that this kind of matches in with his bedroom, I've used the Harry Potter squares, which are quite bright. There's some blue and yellow and greens and things in the Harry Potter squares. And, um, and then I've kind of filled the quilt out with the gray and navy and red and white. Um, so yeah, this is a really simple patchwork quilt to do. I've simply cut tons and tons of 12 by 12 squares and taken a centimetre seam allowance so that the finished squares are 10 centimetres each. And then I've um, quilted it and I've backed it with just a simple cotton. It's a white cotton with grey stars on over it. And then for the binding, I've gone for a navy star binding and those colours and the star pattern just fit in with his bedroom because his bedroom is navy and white stars. So I am so pleased with this. It's just one of those jobs. I love making quilts, but because I used to make them for work with my Poppy and Primrose shop, um, I kind of got a bit, not fed up with them. Fed up is probably the wrong word, but you know what I mean? I just made so many of them that I felt as though I was losing the love for them in a way. And um, so I took those off of my shop recently because they were such a big job and I haven't made one for a while. So it was really quite nice to go back to making a quilt again. Um, it's just a really therapeutic thing to make, I think, because it's all sewing straight seams. So you can really just sit there and kind of switch off and just sew. Um, because this one was so big, I made, the blocks up in four squares at a time. So I cut all of my fabrics out and then I basically just mixed and matched sewing two squares together um, until I'd finished all of my squares and then I sewed them into four square blocks and then I sewed them again into rows and just joined them by rows. There's so many different ways of putting together a quilt top, um, but that's how I tend to do mine. I'm just gonna stand up and show you how big this is and hopefully you'll be able to see a bit more of the quilt pattern. This is so big that it's actually taller than me. I think it's just a little bit off of um, a single bed quilt size actually. So I'm really pleased with how big it turned out in the end. Um, yeah, it was just really lovely to make. One thing that I do, um, I know people use, look, there's so many different quilt waddings and um, things that you can use as quilt wadding or interlining or whatever but um, for this one I've actually used curtain interlining um, which is something that I've done before with my quilts. I wouldn't use curtain interlining for the quilts that I sell but for the ones that I know that I'm going to be washing and I'm going to be taking care of at home I have used curtain interlining just to use that as the wadding inside and I find that really easy to work with. It's really easy to sew, it's easy to cut and it washes well as well. So um, one tip, obviously personal preference is not something that you're supposed to use as quilt wadding, 
um, but that's what I've used in the past and it's much cheaper and it's worked really well. Yeah, probably not too much more to say about this. When I mentioned that I was making this, I did have quite a few people ask me if I would do a sew along or some tutorials on how to make a quilt. So if that's of interest and it's maybe something that I can think about doing in the future, um, it would be really nice to do that actually because I do love making quilts. I'm definitely not an expert. I don't make all the intricate fancy kind of quilts that there are out there which are absolutely beautiful but I do um, just love a traditional kind of squared patchwork quilt like this one so yeah really really pleased with this I'm so pleased that I got it finished before his birthday and everything and he really seems to like it as well so that's that one my finished Harry Potter quilt so lastly, I have a finished knitting project to share, one that's been going on for quite some time, but I finally finished my blue cardigan. So this is a Serdar pattern. I'll just pop in an image of the pattern here because I've just got it on the computer. I didn't bother to print out the picture or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm so pleased with this now. It's quite kind of, um, I want to say granny but I guess I mean vintage <laughs> um, but I really really like it I love the lace pattern on there I'll just hold it up to the camera so that you can see the lace pattern in a bit more detail but yeah this was just one of those knits that was just really nice to knit it came together really easily I didn't have any problems with it the shaping is really easy the only time I came into any kind of problems or difficulties I guess was when I was decreasing to do one of the neck edges um, and it's just you know when you're decreasing and you're trying to keep in a lace pattern at the same time sometimes it can get a bit confusing but I got there in the end I tend to write everything down now as I go so that I remember where I am and how many stitches I've lost and everything and where I need to be in the pattern so yeah I've got there in the end this just turned out to be a really nice size as well so I didn't make any alterations to the pattern and it's a really nice length I'm just going to put this on in a minute so that you can see what it looks like on and I also need to get a couple of photos of it as well so I'll just put it on in a minute and let you see what it looks like in terms of buttons I just finished in the end with these kind of fake um, vintage style buttons which I got from John Lewis they're actually plastic but they look as though they're kind of metal and crystal or glass obviously they're not but um yeah they're really really pretty and I'm so glad I went for them in the end because I think they just finish it really nicely and um yeah they just add a little bit of um extra to this cardigan I guess I was originally looking for blue buttons but I'm really pleased that I found these ones in the end so I'll just pop this on now and show you what it looks like on so here it is on, I really really like it, I do feel a bit as though I should be wearing it as a twin set with some pearls or something but I really like it, um, I quite like the kind of old fashioned, old school um, style of this. So I'll just stand up and show you the length. So you can see it's really quite long, it comes well past my hips, I can't even quite get the bottom of that <laughs> on the camera, it kind of comes to mid hip I'd say. And as I say I didn't lengthen anything or shorten anything or make any changes to the pattern so I think that's a really nice length, I'm really pleased with that. Um, I've just got it on today with the little vest that I had on underneath my blouse but I'd probably wear this with a really nice Ogden cami or something underneath it, it's really quite nice and warm. So the yarn I knit this with was a Rowan cotton cashmere yarn and I think the colour is Morning Sky or something but I'll link it down below. Um, and oh, I forgot to mention actually I came into um, a couple of difficulties with my yarn amount at the end. So, um, so basically I didn't use the uh, yarn that the pattern tells you to use, I had this in my stash already and I thought it would be a good match for this cardigan. So I had about five balls and that's what the pattern said you needed but because I wasn't using the actual recommended yarn I guess my um, the length of the balls or whatever wasn't quite the same as what they suggested. So um, I was coming towards the end of one of my sleeves and was almost out of wool and I thought I better order myself another ball of wool and then I used up all of that ball of wool and was thinking I don't think I'm going to have quite enough to do the button band, I think I better order another ball. <laughs> So this was a very expensive cardigan in the end um, and with my last ball of yarn that I ordered I needed it to do about two extra rows so it was really annoying that I had to buy that whole other ball of wool um, just to finish two rows and then sew up the cardigan with it but yeah it's just one of those things I just kind of didn't take into account that I wasn't using the right yarn recommended for the pattern so I might not necessarily have had the right amount to finish the whole cardigan with. 
But I think I was quite lucky actually because sometimes when you do that you get um, different dye lots, don't you? So the colour looks a bit funny. I can't notice any difference actually um, where I have used the newer balls of wool which were a different yarn lot. Sorry, I keep saying yarn and then saying wool. I guess I mean yarn because it's not really wool. Um, you know what I mean. <laughs> In terms of the level of this pattern, I know people ask me sometimes what level and whether patterns would be suitable for beginners or whatever. I think um, I think this lace pattern is actually a really easy one. So if you're looking for quite an easy, repetitive lace pattern, this would be a really good one to start with. And one of the good things is that obviously the lace is just on the two fronts and it's not on the back or the sleeves. So you do get a bit of a break from having to count all the time and um, watch where you are in the pattern and everything. So I think if you are a beginner, if you can do decreasing and uh, passing slip stitches over and things like that, then I think you'll be absolutely fine with this lace pattern and definitely give it a go because it is a really lovely, easy, repetitive pattern to do once you get the hang of it. I could quite easily sit there in the evening and watch TV and do this lace pattern at the same time. And um, yeah, I'm not a very technical knitter really at all. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that one. I'll link the pattern and the wool and everything down below. If you have any more questions that I haven't covered um, talking about this knit, then do let me know in the comments below and I'll try and answer them for you. A couple of people just asked me to share how I was getting on with my We Are Knitters kit. Um, so I started with the Lighthouse sweater in the end and this is how I'm getting on with it. So this is knitting up so quickly. I started this about a week or so ago. As soon as I'd finished this blue cardigan that I'm wearing, I got on with this because I was so excited to start it. And um, yeah, it's knitting up really quickly. Um, so this is the stripy pattern. It's knitting up really nicely. The wool is lovely. The only thing I'm finding a little bit difficult is that the yarn or the wool or whatever is quite thin and you have to knit it on thicker needles than I guess you normally would for such a thin yarn. So I'm using a size six millimeter needle and sometimes it just feels a little bit slippery. So now and again, I accidentally slip my stitches off of the needles before I catch them. Um, but that's not really too much of a problem. I just need to be careful with it. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. So I'm onto the decreases. Um, I'm onto the armhole decreases of this already, so it's really knitting up quite quickly. And the pattern is really easy. So the back and the front are the same. Um, you just make two of the same back and fronts, two of the same sleeves, and then you pick up all of the stitches around the neck um, to do the neck band. So yeah, really super quick and easy project, which is really quite nice after knitting a lace pattern that you have to concentrate on. I'm really enjoying just sitting and knitting this in the evenings while watching TV. So um, yeah, I'll link this kit down below as well and just pop in an image of the jumper so that you can see what I'm actually knitting. <laughs> but yeah, really enjoying that so far. So I think that's actually it for this makes video for September. A bit of a shorter one this time. I didn't make too much, but I'm really, really pleased that I managed to get this knitting project finished and I'm pleased that I got my quilt done. I have so many plans of sewing things I want to get sewn up for October um, and going on into autumn and winter so I'm really hoping to get on with some of those makes next month. As I say if you do have any questions about anything that I've talked about today or if there's anything that I haven't covered then do let me know in the comments below. As always please do let me know what you're working on, let me know what you're making, let me know what your favourite make of September was. I think my favourite make was probably this cardigan actually because I'm just really pleased with how it turned out. So yeah, let me know what your favourite make of the month was too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you give it a big like because that just helps YouTube to recognise my video and show it to more people and things like that. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'll be back hopefully next week with another video and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye.